I know just what it'll be. A toast to the day when our love can be taken out of mothballs and exposed to the noonday sun. Yvonne, please. I can't become Mrs. Craig Mitchell just yet. Because there's another Mrs. Craig Mitchell who has priority. We have been over this a dozen times. I'll tell you right now, Mr. Mitchell. I'm getting tired. I'm getting sick and tired of waiting around for you to, as you say, work things out. If you don't do something about it pretty soon, I will. Yvonne, to take matters into your own hands right now would ruin everything. I hope you won't let temper lead you into doing anything foolish. You're going? Yes. I don't think our affair should be discussed while we're uh, emotionally disturbed. I'll call you tomorrow. Good night, Yvonne. broadcast, I learned a young woman named Yvonne Madison had been found murdered in her apartment. At that time, I didn't have the faintest idea who Yvonne Madison might be. And when I found out, it was a decided shock. Good morning, Mrs. Mitchell. Oh, good morning, Mr. Maris. Your secretary suggested that I could wait in here for you. I hope you don't mind. My secretary has instructions to be kind to the wives of all my clients. How's Mr. Mitchell? Well, he... I hear he's just been elected to the vice presidency. Yes, yes, he has. You'll be glad to hear I've cleared title to their new building site. Mr. Maris, we're in trouble. I need help and advice. Of course. What's the problem? I'm afraid Craig is involved in a murder. Craig Mitchell involved in a murder? Last night, uh, a young woman known as Yvonne Madison was shot to death in her apartment. She and Craig were having an affair. A very serious affair. You've uh, known about these affairs all along? Oh, yes. But I closed my eyes to them because... Well, I suppose because I love Craig more than I love my pride. And also because I felt that these... These other women were passing fancies. And that he'd always come back to me. And up until now, he always has. You believe Craig actually killed this woman? Oh, of course not. But you see, the trouble is, the, the papers say that the police have no clue to the murderer. And they're bound to find out that Craig has been a frequent visitor. Oh, Mr. Maris, what am I going to do? There's only one thing to do in this situation. Go directly to the police and tell them exactly what you told me, without waiting for them to find out about Craig. Lieutenant Weston is a very understanding man. He'll see that there's no undue publicity. Will you go to him? I came to you for advice, Mr. Maris, and if that's your advice, I'll take it. Will you go with me? Of course. And that's the whole story, Lieutenant. As ugly and disgraceful as it seems. Mrs. Mitchell, if a lot more people would face facts as courageously as you have, we'd have a lot less crime. This could solve one very important problem in our area. What's that? Fingerprints all over the apartment. 
No identification. They could belong to Mr. Mitchell. Then you think that he... Just a minute, Mrs. Mitchell. The presence of Craig's fingerprints in the apartment doesn't necessarily mean that he's guilty of the crime. No, but of course I'll question him. Do you know where Mr. Mitchell is now? He's probably home. Good. Well, let's see if he is at home now. Do you mind if I just wait here? I, I think I've faced as much as I can face for one day. No, not at all, Mrs. Mitchell. I understand. You just stay here and make yourself at home. Thank you. Mr. Mitchell, you said you've known Yvonne Madison for some time. Yes, about six months, maybe a little longer. When did you see her last? Last night. Mind telling me about it? Not much to tell. I went to her apartment about 6.30. We were going to have a couple of drinks and then go out for dinner. You said were going. Yes. Does that mean you didn't go out for dinner? That's right. We got into an argument. Then what happened? Well, I decided going to dinner with Yvonne in that mood would be most unpleasant, so I picked up my hat and left. What time is this? About 7.15. The medical examiner said the time of death at about 7.15. I had nothing to do with that. Mr. Mitchell, do you own a revolver? Yes. What do you keep in? Top drawer of that desk. You mind? Go right ahead. This one? Uh, that's right. Has this gun been fired recently? Never been fired that I know of. Mr. Mitchell, there are two discharged shells in this gun and the smell of powder in the muzzle I'd say had been fired in the last 48 hours. I don't see how that could be. But it is. And ballistics will be able to verify whether or not the bullets from this gun were the ones that killed Yvonne Madison in a very short time. In the meantime, you're under arrest. Suspicion of murder. <laughs> Your husband is under arrest. Oh, why did I do it? The way he looks at me just now. Nothing in his face but hatred and bitterness. Oh, why did I do it to him? You did the only thing you could have done. I'm sorry I involved you in this, Mr. Maris. I guess that's all you can do. I know your reputation, and I... I know that you never defend anybody that you believe to be guilty. Goodbye, Mr. Marison. Thank you. Mrs. Mitchell. Yes? I don't believe your husband's guilty. But you said... I think he was completely honest with Lieutenant Weston. Even if that gun proves to be the murder weapon, that doesn't mean that Craig pulled the trigger. Then you think there's a possibility that... Yes. I've just thought of something else. What's that? A short while ago, I discovered a package of letters written by some of his other girlfriends. Uh -huh. Maybe one of those women was mixed up in this in some way. Well, we'll look into it right away. You drive home. I'll, I'll see you there. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I can't help you. Mr. Mitchell isn't home. If you want to write to this address, I'll see if he gets it. Somebody you know? No, no, he wanted to see Craig. I don't know why. Won't you come in, Mr. Maris? Sit down, Mr. Maris. I'll get the letters. Something wrong? Look. He must have burned them. Lieutenant Weston. Lieutenant, this is Herb Maris. Would you check the ownership 
of a club coupe about eight years old. License number KTY 463. I've got it, Herb. I'll have that information for you in a minute. You call me back on it, huh? In the meantime, I think I've got a little item that'll interest you. Oh, what's that? The bullets that killed Yvonne Madison were fired from the gun we found in Mitchell's house. So we've taken the word suspicion out of the charge. Now it's plain old first degree murder. Hello, Counselor? Counselor. I was curious to know why a man of this type should be at the Mitchell house wanting to see Craig. And when Lieutenant Weston gave me the name of the registered owner, it made the situation even more baffling. The car was registered to Mrs. Alpha Heath, 2301 9th Avenue, in the south and somewhat run-down section of the city. Yeah? I'm sorry to bother you. I'm looking for a Mrs. Alpha Heath. I'm Mrs. Heaney. Do you own a 51 Club Coupe, license number KTY 463? Yes, I do. What about it? I believe I saw the car on Arden Boulevard around 11 o'clock this morning, being driven by a young man. Good day. I'm interested in that young man. I'm an attorney, and I'd like to ask him a few questions. Oh, that'd be Spook Chambers. That reminds me, he still got my car key. Who's Spook Chambers? One of my rumors. I let him take the car out once in a while, keeps the battery up. <laughs> when I'm not driving it myself, that is. Where can I find Mr. Chambers? Mr. Chambers. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> well, come in. We'll see if he's in his room. Thank you. Stump out of tonight. Come right on in. I want the key. What key? Don't be stupid. The key to my car. Why? It's none of your business. I might have to use it later. Oh, no, you won't. Quit your stalling and give me the key. There's a man outside waiting to see you. What's he want? Ask him. Come on now, cough it up. The key. Uh, thanks. Hm. Okay, mister. He's in here. Yeah, what do you want? I want to talk to you for a minute. You a cop? No. No, I'm a lawyer. They're just about the same. What do you want to talk to me about? I want to talk to you about Mr. Mitchell. Mr. who? Mitchell. The gentleman you were trying to see this morning on Island Boulevard. You're chopping in the wrong tree, mister. I was nowhere near Arden Boulevard this morning. I saw you. You need glasses. I saw you talking to Mrs. Mitchell, and I saw you get in Mrs. Heaney's car and drive off. Look, I'm in no mood to be bamboozled by lawyers. I got one little word for you, with three little letters in it, out. There's only one thing. Your refusal to discuss the situation with me means you'll have to discuss it with the police. Would you like to come with me now, or shall I have them come and get you? Why? What have I got to do with any murders? That's what I want to find out. All right. Where are you going to be, say, uh, around five o'clock? I can be here, any place you say. All right, I'll see what I can find out for you. Thanks. Uh, you be here at five. I ain't here, you wait. I'll do that. Some guy was here asking questions about that Yvonne Madison thing. But don't worry, I stole them. But I'm going to have to drop out of sight for a while. I'll need the money now. Yeah, now. Well, how soon can you get it? It's quarter to three now. Yeah. Okay, four o'clock. I'll wait here. And listen. If it ain't here by four, 
I'm coming after it, you understand? Spook Chambers, alias Rusty Harper, alias Gordon McNeil, alias Charles Kilmer. He's not on the wanted list right now, but he's got a record as long as you're armed. This five o'clock proposition was probably a stall. Herb, let's get there a little early and see what happens. Hi, Mr. Cheney. Uh, what do you want now? Coming around here with that smile of yours? I just wanted to tell you the good news. That guy that was here earlier, he lined me up on a new job. A job? Huh? Which bank? Oh, don't be funny, Mrs. Haney. This is legit. I'm going to pick up a couple of hundred dollars advance at four o'clock. Well, that's fine. You can pay up your back rent. Uh, I'll need the car to get it, though. Oh, try walking. It might do you good. You've got no faith in me, Mrs. Haney. Listen, you took a chance on me before. Why not take another one, huh? It'll pay off big, I guarantee it. I don't know why I have a lot of phony like you in my house. Oh. Well, you can take the key. But this is your last chance. Now, you come back with that money tonight, or you don't get in. I'll have it for sure. Any hey. better? And put some gas in that car! What now? Uh, Lieutenant Weston, police department. We're looking for spook chambers. Oh, he left here about five minutes ago. Did he say where he was going? Not a word. Yes, he did. Told me you were going to give him a job and some money. Are you? I haven't decided. Now what? I'll put out a call I haven't picked up. Hey, wait a minute. You better watch out and see that my car doesn't get all shot up. Your car? Yes. He swindled me out of the keys again. But it's in the garage. I saw it on the way in. My car? Let's check it. It's still there. Five minutes too late. I'll put in a call for the lab boys in the car now. <laughs> Four dollars. Cigarette lighter, glasses, pen knife. You know, Herb, a lot of things here, but nothing that really tells a story. Except that Spook didn't have much to show for his years of crime. Mr. Heaney, there are a lot of keys here for a man in Spook's position. Do you know what they're for? I uh, see. Uh, yeah, this is the key to his room, and, uh, uh, this is the key to the front door, and this, well, you know as much about this as I do. It's a master key. It'll unlock anything. It'll fit. Uh, uh, this, no, I don't know. you get in? With the key. The key to the front door. 
Where did you get it? We found a dead man in a garage at Ninth Avenue this afternoon. He had this key in his possession. What a coincidence. No, not a coincidence. He was the same man I saw talking with you earlier today. He was an odd sort of man, but I... Mrs. Mitchell, we think you met Spook Chambers during your welfare work in that section of the city. And we think you propositioned him to kill Yvonne Madison and put the blame on your husband. Mr. Maris, do you know what you are saying? I think so. I think you gave Spook Mr. Mitchell's gun and the key to this house. And he came back, replaced the gun in the drawer after the murder. What a fantastic idea. Then to make sure he was immediately placed under suspicion, you came to me with a very logical and believable story, which resulted in Craig being arrested for murder. Go on. What's the rest of it? When I threatened to bring the police in on the case, Spook panicked. You decided that if he were arrested, he might crack. And you knew he was leaving his house about four o'clock, so you went to the garage and killed him. All right, Mr. Maris. Now that it's over, I, I really don't care. But if you've ever known the heartbreak, the, the fury that surges over you, when the one you love turns to someone else, over and over again. You reach the point where nothing matters anymore. Nothing. Here's the evidence, Lieutenant. Shall we go? Yeah. 